But Diddy has hit on me at Steve Rifkin's house. What and was your... everybody in the, at the house was gay, but I didn't know it. Why do you think so many bad boy artists went broke with Diddy? Or after? Well, you got to remember, this is Diddy, Diddy career really started like 91, 92. A lot of us was even educated about the music business then. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to think, even the locks, they was kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mace was a kid. If you look back at Biggie and Tupac right now, they died at 25. Right. They, to Still, us now, they look yeah. like kids, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people got robbed because they didn't know the business. A lot of people with bad boys to come to the dark side of the industry, right? The same stuff that Diddy's, they alleging now with the, the parties, the drugs, the sex. Right. A lot of people fell victim to that, right? Because that was their lifestyle. Now, when we was younger, we wasn't paying attention. But if you go and you look at the Big Papa video, mm. The lead woman in, or the lead guy in that is a transgender, right? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look it up as you say that. Yeah, you can. Um, so you more so, and, and, and we, we could be as somewhat candid, you more so just alluding to like the, the accusations of Diddy being like into homosexual lifestyles. Yeah. That energy of hip hop yeah. that has always been seen as taboo, and we could never verify it because none of us were on the inside. Right. Well, I was. But I was going to say, I was yeah. going to ask you, so you, you've seen this firsthand. Yeah, I, I've never seen, like, or just, but Diddy has hit on me at Steve Rifkin house. What and was your... everybody in the, at the house was gay, but I didn't know it until I really paid attention and looked around at my surroundings. I'm like, oh, shit. Right. Like, what's going that on? That sounds like Exhibit's story, because Exhibit had a story like that. They went to yeah. Miami. No, nah, but he went to a club. Right. I went to Steve Rifkin's house. Right. It was a, after a BET Awards, we went to an after party. Right. Me, Lil' Kim, Hillary uh, Weston, who was Lil' Kim's manager. Okay. Uh, at the time. And um, we go to uh, the after party. We run into Diddy, and Diddy tells us to come meet him at. He tells them, not me. He tells Kim and them, yo, come meet me at Steve Rifkin house. And we all go over to Steve Rifkin house. And while we there, um, there was another executive that had been making passes at me a lot in the entertainment industry. He shows up. For context, what does that look like? Because they're not, they're not going to be that bold, are they? What do you mean? Is it like, you know how if you shoot a shot at a woman, it could be either very direct or very subtle? It's very direct. Okay. Not going, trying right. to grab a nigga nuts, but you know when an, uh, someone is attracted to you, male, female, okay. hungry for is a dog, and he humping on your leg. Right. You know the motherfucker horny. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, it, it was it was definitely obvious. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Especially in hindsight. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, that lifestyle exists within the industry. Right. right? We've heard it in... Yeah. It, is, it is a fact, brother. It is a fact. Well, From sports players, singers, af uh, actors, comedians, uh, white, black, Asian, it don't matter. So, because that's a whole conversation you just that you just said, even with the Diddy story. Are you like? How do you respond to that when he when he makes a pass at you? You play it off. You, you laugh. You, you treat like, I'm cool. for me at this stage in my life. I'm more mature than to punch a nigga in his face. Right. Right. So you just ignore it, and you know you kind of give him the uh, let him the look like nah. And giving that nigga the look made him just look hard and made me put my head down because right. he got five niggas standing around him. They like the whole booty mob and shit, right. And I'm sitting there like. What the hell? I would grab Hillary by her shirt and I drag her ass outside. Like, yo, this nigga over here hitting on me. Like, yo, don't bring me to none of, nothing like this. And, and then when I, I'm not going to name all the people that was there. Now, I talked about yeah. this before, but okay. I'm not going to do that, right? 
But everybody that was there was either gay or secretly gay or by shelter. But right now, from what I know now, and I say, they all get down like that, right? Right. And they, me hanging with them, they could have thought, because I was hanging with Lil' Kim, that maybe right. I would be with that. You know right. what I'm saying? But I'm not going to knock them for trying. You know what I'm saying? Because all these, 75%, 85% of these people that's in the industry that's popular, you know what I'm saying? I have succumbed to that lifestyle. My question for that, and then we can kind of do a spin move out of it. Because I'm always curious about was it already in them or was it industry, does the industry groom them to be open to it? The industry grooms them to be open to it. Like if we go back to the Big Papa video, uh -huh. right? Why is the lead person out of all the bad bitches in New York City back then, even the women in the video, right? Why was the lead a trans a transgender? Why was there? You remember the scene in the bathroom? Um, Why was there a transgender pissing in the bathroom with the in, in the guy? You standing remember? up, right? Yeah. You remember there's a woman a woman in the bathroom with klepto, klepto and I can't remember who the other person is, and they looking at the the nigga ding ding, and and why they standing at the urinal. Like, why is that in there way back then? Got you. And I'm just, I just pulled now, the Now look scene. at the girl when, go to the scene when Buster's talking to her at the, at the bar and big walk up and, and, and move the nigga. And then, or when she say true, stop it right there hey. and look at the knot in her throat. Not the knot in her throat. Talking about, talking about this young lady? That's her. Look at it, zoom in on the throat. Women can't have a little, is that like nine? Her name is Shamika, she was from Queens and she got killed cause she was, a nigga was dating her, didn't know it was a man and went to have sex with her and found out she was a man and she's dead and he's okay. in jail. So you know the story. So when you see that, are you alluding to, they, they, they sprinkle it in there, they subconsciously make you comfortable with it? Bro. Cause that is weird for, not to say weird as a derogatory, but it doesn't make sense why that scene would be in a hip hop video when hip hop was so much about masculinity and da 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 da. And so it's supposed to be homophobic, right? That was so they say, right? Right. But we so, weren't thinking about transgenders back then. And, but they're there. Okay. What I believe is that the Tupac Biggie shit got so gangster and so big that the agenda that they was about to push on us, that they were later pushed on us, uh -huh. it just got pushed back. Okay. They, was, they was getting ready to groom us right there. They was grooming us. We got a transgender in the Big Papa video, in the bathroom, and the lead woman. Not only in, in, in Big Papa, right. and Warren, and she's in the bed with Biggie, and then in the Flavor in Your Air remix, she's dancing behind LL. Right. And... Hype Williams is director, and she's the lead in all three of those videos, and he's the director of all three of those videos. And it's rumored that that was his chick, or nigga, or whatever. Right. Okay. And we can leave people to maybe investigate more on this, but that's, I mean, you're saying some stuff that does have me question, because I remember that scene, and I remember more so laughing at it, because I thought it was like a joke as a, as a youngster. Like, why is the lady in the, you know, she playing along? I didn't think that that was the, I didn't think about it now in hindsight. Right, and see, and they was grooming with us. They, they was trying to groom us as a culture. Because right now, when you think of the LGBTQ community, who you think about? I do think about us. Black people. Yeah, because right? they, they- How often do you see a, a, a white guy running around- On an ad and, yeah, they market right? it in the hood. Or how about Chinese people? Right, that's a good point. Do you see that? No. No, right? How about the Indians? You right. know what I'm saying? There's a lot of Indian people out here. You know what I'm saying? You don't see them dressing and it's us. Yeah, I can agree that they have made us appear as the poster childs for it. From the Saucy Santanas all the way down. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, and this dude, he got a beard and, a, 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 and, and nails. Like, and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like he's in, he's stuck in between, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's his thing. But for us as black people, it seems like the black women, they love it. 
when we mm. we when we we super feminine. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then they say we not it ain't no black men in the house. The black men, the one the the black woman is the most unprotected, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Well, y'all are encouraging the black men to be women. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this teaser. You can watch the full interview right now at hypersclub.com, along with more behind the scenes and additional content.